I love this. Inside the Hard Rock Live Artist Lounge at Odyssey Beach Festival, we have the 1975. Hey. Not taking the stage until later. Hello. Maddie, you already took the stage. Yeah, I was in dashboard for five minutes. I was in the crowd. Russ was in the crowd. <laughs> oh, I, was my God. I didn't know. I didn't know that was happening. No, I no, saw you... it about an hour late. What on the it. internet? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell anyone. No, I was in the spa. Well, for <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I don't know where I'd rather be in the crowd, on the stage, or oh, at in the, the spa. 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 But, yeah, I'm loving this. Yeah. The spa. <laughs> Um, so, but question though, this isn't the first time you've gotten on stage with him and he called you guys the greatest band in the world. How does that feel? Very, very lovely of him to say that. I'm friends with Chris. I've known him for a while. Like I, you know, I grew up in that. We all grew up. We were, we were a band. We've been a band since like 2002, three or something like that. So we were around in that whole scene. Mm. People just didn't care about us. <laughs> so we survived it. But it's very sweet of him to say something like that. It was lovely. I just wanted to be in Dashboard for a minute. Well, it's, well, yeah, he's incredible. It's an incredible band. But I feel like you've always been on the path to being here. I read stories about getting to hang out with Sting and about you being pulled on stage for Green Day at some <laughs> point. Like, those, I feel, looking back, are clear signs you were in the right place. But at the time, were they motivational things to keep you going? Um. Maybe, yeah. I think a bit blind delusion. Like I said, I, I'm kind of a broken record with kind of how long we've been together, but it kind of sets the context for everything, you know. Like we've, um, like we've been doing it since we were 13, so we don't really know how to do anything else. We don't know how to like. So like believing in it is just kind of like believing in our reality. So all those moments were, you know, kind of um, signposts to where we wanted to go. But we were doing that anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and well, that's part of the process. I think that's part of what's so great about you. This foundation of friendship, it's clear. Everything's really, really authentic, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it's very right. true. I even love how you guys are always trying to make sounds. It's still fun for you. Uh, the new album, Being Funny in a Foreign Language, whose idea was it to play instruments you don't normally play in an effort to find these, like, new little sounds? We've kind of said that for a while done we, that for a bit we've done that for a bit i think that this record was the first time it was like re an exaggerated idea it's just about nuance isn't it like at the end of the day like you know you go you start out uh, in the, your early days with like three or four chords then you go into like the world of music and music production and it gets all kind of complicated and then you kind of go back to just like the fundamentals you know what i mean so it's just about trying to make the fundamentals interesting Mm. It's just about living to this record. We sort of created the most limitation just because that sort of breeds a different kind of creativity. Yeah, but also like playing together, which is something. No, we... I didn't play with you. Oh, you play, no, no, George didn't play with us. No. We all played a lot of stuff. Did you play strings? Um, I played the cello, mate. You played cello? Yeah, we did. I did play the violin. <laughs> uh, yeah, you did. Remember when? the Titanic? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I did. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you For the record. played it a bit too well for it to be funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know. And Maybe that was the benefit of being in the studio that we were in as well. There were so many just instruments lying around that it was just pulling yeah. stuff out and just trying it. And the room is so conducive stuck. to just being like that, and then it's ready. And, and it's if you can't do, if you can't make a record with instruments and you're a band, like you suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you pick up any instruments that you think you're really going to like explore maybe moving forward and try and really learn? Probably not the cello. <laughs> no. No. I want Han to sing more lead vocal stuff, but he doesn't want to do it. Lead vocal stuff? <laughs> <laughs> guy sounds like Teddy Pendergrass. Like, <laughs> really? Like, you think that I'm the good uh, singer? And... Oh! <laughs> so, like, you know, I can't Teddy wait to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. It's a weird... It's like Michael McDonald. It's a weird bit. Yeah. <laughs> Did Jack get any of this? Like, Jack Antonoff got to work with him. Brilliant, superstar, amazing, like, yeah. mind. Yeah. For a mm. band who is authentic, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, what kind of impact did he leave on the 1975? Because no way he didn't leave you he with something. He was pushing all of the stuff, like, big time. He was like, uh, yeah, he was all up for, like, no one, to, like, Matty not singing BVs and stuff, which we were, we were talking about anyway, but it was... It's yeah, he reason, really. It's a bit more he raw. gave it. He gave uh, our ideas a lot of confidence and and actualized them really in a very streamlined way. He just he just makes you feel confident. He's such a great he's such a great dude for that. Yeah, he's all about moments and like capturing that rather than like polishing stuff and making it perfect. That's why it, this album sounds a little bit more raw. Well, and maybe even vulnerable. Mm. Totally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you have because like you constantly like the moment that you expose yourself. 
like you all kind of latch onto it and you go like that's the thing mm. and then you go a bit like oh god all right so then you have to do that and you perform it and and also like it was one room like a lot of studios are you record vocals in here drums in there it's a couple of things we did like that but the majority of stuff um the self-effacing performative stuff was done in the room with everyone else so we all had to be comfortable enough to do that do you know what i mean mm -hmm. jack's great man do you know what i mean like um jack's just a just a such a great person to have in the room when you're making something he sounds uh from what i've heard like a sounding board we've ha we have a lot we're very lucky now do you know what i mean like we have you know, whether it's there's George and Jack having conversations or me and, you know, it's people like Bo Burnham having conversations. You know, I mean, it's like we, we our sounding boards now are kind of the people that we really, really revere in, in our line of work. So this record and this show is kind of being a testament to a lot of kind of like, I wouldn't say so much like collaboration, but like people wanting to be involved in the 1975 and wanting to like make make it. The, the best it can be, which is really humbling thing to have. Well, let's get back to being authentic then. How do you keep this thing that you guys have created, the 1975, and kind of drown out the noise of everybody else's? You know, everybody wants to give you their opinion or try and help in one way, but at the end of the day, it's you all in a room making the decisions. So how do you keep that authentic nature, even though you're getting all of this outside kind of influence? And Well, we don't have um, outside influence because we're on our own label. Well, I mean, like from Jack Antonoff, from like from people who you're now sitting down with and opening up with and becoming more more mm. vulnerable with mm. in that vein. I guess those. I guess it's been it's been such a long. You know, we've been making records and albums now for over ten years and been a band for nearly twenty. So the people that we still have around us are people that we really want to have around us. So like we do just trust their opinion, and it's and it's not really. Sometimes it is heavily collaborative. Sometimes, if we're it's, in it, sometimes it's reaffirming something that you've already got. So, and and if yeah. if we're in a 1975 room, like a room where 1975 stuff is happening, I am the loudest voice. Mm. Not saying that like, <laughs> but I am. So like, I'm not. We were we weren't fearful of being drowned out by external influences because, for a start, the record was kind of written in itself. You know, mm, it's it's beautiful. Thanks. One of the things I love so much about y'all's writing is your wordsmiths. Like, I love a good word. I find it so beautiful that we fight so hard to find a word that describes something yes, so yeah, I specific. Agree. I you agree, know? yeah. So what is your favorite word? My favorite word is petrichor. Why? Because I think that it does exactly that. It's something that kind of the, the succinctly expresses quite an ephemeral Sensation. So a petrichor is the smell of um, yeah, the smell of rain on the ground after a period of dryness. Now we all know that smell. Do you know what I mean? When you go in somewhere and you come out and it's warm and it's just started raining, that smell is called a petrichor. Now it's quite a complicated thing to explain. Well, or it takes a couple of words. Like anything, stand-up comedy, lyrics, poetry. I don't like poetry, but that kind of stuff. It's like what you have to, what you should. What I strive to do, I think the best people trying to strive to do is to take the biggest ideas and convey them in the in the fewest words possible. Mm. Now that's like George Carlin, or that's like George Burns, or that's um, you know, it could be Bertrand Russell if you're looking at it in different contexts. So it's I think that it's important because it's 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 in music, isn't it? It's pop music. It's not writing. I don't want to be uh, like, you know, I'm not. We're not. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you're an artist, and so you have a vision, and it's nice that you, you know, latch onto the idea of somebody being so specific about what something really, really is, and it comes through in your it's writing very, as yeah, well. Yeah, it's really satisfying when, like, you know, when... You can pinpoint it. Yeah, yeah, when something is articulated, it's what we're striving, it's all we're striving to do, you know? Hmm. George, also, obviously, huge writing with the 1975. Do you have a favorite word? Um, you do, you do, bro. Ubiquitous. <laughs> you <being with> <laughs> uh, it's hard, isn't it? Well, I, I, I don't right now. I don't. I'm the one. I'm the one who gets all caught up in the words of it. Sometimes the guys almost want to pull me back because I'm too concerned with it. Like oh. I'm in love with you was like I was trying to be too complicated, and then Adam was like, "Just say I'm in love with you," mm. instead of being like, "I'm," the, you know, like trying to negate it or like cut myself off at the pass or like. 
denounce my own sincerity. He was just like, be sincere. Well, just say it, you yeah. know? Well, that's a beautiful thing about the balance here and the friendship here and how you guys actually come together and make this process happen. And a lot of fans or a lot of people are becoming huge fans of your sound, your process and what you're doing. One of which actually recently spoke to us, um, Haley Williams of Paramore. Oh, what a legend. Uh, an icon, a legend, full, a trailblazer, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. someone who right now is creating some amazing music that really reflects a time period mm -hmm. that is important right now. Mm -hmm. And anyways, I do have a little clip. She had something to say to you. Oh, how cool. Do you mind me playing it for you? Yeah, please. My phone locked because, you know, these hooligans in this room. <laughs> we can't have That's them getting so, on this. This is so cool. Yeah, no, she is really amazing. I have yet to see her live. It's one of my, like, life goals. But here's Haley Williams with a little message for you. There's been a lot of uh, really cool appreciation from other art. Maddie from 1975 sent a really sweet uh, message to Platonic. me, and and I actually didn't even tell you yet to the to the guys. No better time than on air. So tell them what uh, to, this is oh, Zach wants to know. What did, Matt, what did Maddie <laughs> say? Yeah, really, what did he say? <laughs> it's really encouraging, and <laughs> just said like, I think he saw us talk about one, he probably saw me talk about one of their songs mm. and he wrote this very long thing about this is why and about how he's come to every Manchester show that we've ever played and he just loves the band yeah, and hopes cool. that we hang out so um, if you're listening <laughs> let's, let's, yeah. let's set it up for real that's so cool. Are we setting something up? Well, definitely. We we actually that's true. We did we did speak on message because she's been so nice about the band, and I was a bit like, oh, well, that's an excuse to talk to Haley for Paramore, isn't it? So um um and then and then yeah. So I think they've just finished touring, and then we said that we'd try and hang out at some point. And um, again, it's a bit like Paramore, even though they're the same age as us. Do you know what I mean? They came out. They were a lot younger than us when they broke. So they sit in the part of my heart that you know like dashboard like today does do you know what i mean so they'll always be a very special band to us well Haley is like the voice of female yeah she and she, angsty she is rage the, like yeah, she yeah. is a queen with the know? first time we saw i remember the first time because they played like what was that festival yeah, yeah and she had like a foot up on the amp and darren came running over being like there's a girl fronting this band and she's like <laughs> got a foot on the amp we all like ran <laughs> like to go and see it <laughs> so dumb yeah she's great no, it's amazing. And Run, Don't Walk to the 1975. If you did not catch them at Odyssey Beach Festival, you can re-catch the performance at odysseybeachfestival.com. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me. No amazing. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Cheers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much.